We've seen some great teams come together throughout NBA history. And whether they had one, two, three, or even five star players, there's always mainly two guys that stand out and are known as the best players on that team. And we've seen NBA duos so good that they've dominated any team in their path. It can be their chemistry, their skill sets, or a combination of the two that makes them so good together. And today we're not only going to be looking at 10 of them, but we're going to be ranking the 10 greatest duos in NBA history. So without wasting any more time, let's get started with number 10, Steph Curry and Kevin Durant. It used to be Clay and Steph as the duo of Golden State, but ever since KD came, he took Clay's spot. But not too much needs to be said about Curry and Durant because we're in the middle of seeing their dominance. And it's a little harder to rank this duo because they're playing on such a stacked team, but they got two MVPs between the two of them. And if you were to put these two guys on any other team, that team would instantly become title contenders. They're both already all-time greats at their position. They can spread the floor better than any of the other duos on the list. And combined, they're one of the top two or three scoring duos on the list. And whatever Curry lacks on defense, Durant does a good job of making up for with his length and his ability to block shots down low. Maybe when it's all said and done, these guys can rank a little bit higher, but since they're still in the middle of their career, they come in at number 10. Number 9. Wilt Chamberlain and Jerry West Early on in Wilt and Jerry's careers, before they teamed up, they had careers that made them two of the most dominant players in NBA history. But neither of them were able to get past Bill Russell and the Celtics and win championships like they should have. Wilt and Russell faced off in the Eastern Conference Finals nearly every year, and Jerry and the Lakers faced off with the Celtics in the Finals six times, going 0 for 6 up until Wilt and Jerry teamed up in 1968. But when they came together on the Lakers, you'd think that they would have won championships like the Warriors have been, but that wasn't the case. Which is part of the reason Jerry and Wilt only rank in at number 9. They teamed up for 5 seasons starting in 1968 until 1973 when Wilt retired. And they made the finals 4 out of those 5 years. But only won once in 1972, which was the first championship that either of them won. It's safe to say that Will Chamberlain and Jerry West could fill the stat sheet better than anyone on this list, but since they had trouble winning championships, it drops them down. Number 8. Tony Parker and Tim Duncan This duo dominated the NBA for almost 20 years. They made the playoffs every single year they played together, finished every season with at least 50 wins, won the second most games as a duo of all time, made the NBA Finals 5 times, and won 4 NBA championships. They had great chemistry as teammates and personalities that worked well together to allow them to have so much success. The Spurs were always one of the most quiet teams in the regular season, but when the playoffs came around, they definitely consistently made some noise. Duncan's the greatest power forward of all time, and Tony Parker was one of the all-time great playoff players ever. They would be ranked higher on the list, but they were always surrounded by Greg Popovich, Manu Ginobili, and a great roster that Popovich led to success for so many years. So even though they were a great duo, they also always had one of the best rosters, so we never really got to see just how good those two guys made the team. Number 7. Larry Bird and Kevin McHale Larry Bird was drafted in 1979 and then teamed up with Kevin McHale and Robert Parrish the next year in 1980, when the Celtics traded for Parrish and drafted McHale third overall. And that team won a championship in their very first season together. But McHale was a rookie, so at first it was Bird and Parrish that were the best players on that team. But McHale quickly developed into a star, and the run they had between 1983 and 86 is what made them an all-time great duo. Because in those three seasons, Seasons, Larry Bird would win three straight MVPs and establish himself as the greatest player in the world. There was no one that could touch him, and his dominance led to a lot of open looks for McHale, which turned him into a 20 and 10 kind of player. So with Bird and McHale leading the team, along with Robert Parrish, they'd make the finals for four straight years from 1984 until 87, with them winning their second championship in 84 by beating the Lakers, and their third in 86 when they beat the Houston Rockets. Number 6. Bob Cousy and Bill Russell We all know the type of career that Bill Russell had, but 
Bob Cousy was a big part of that. He was drafted in 1950, and by 1956, Cousy was described as not only a fan favorite, but as a point guard that used street ball moves to become one of the best in the league at that point. So once Bill Russell was drafted the next year, Bob was the perfect guy to lead the team on offense, while Bill Russell led the team on defense which led to the two dominating on both ends of the court all the way until Cousy retired after the 1963 season. Up until that point though, Cousy won one MVP, Bill Russell won four of them, and combined, they helped the Celtics to six NBA championships in their seven years together. Number five, John Stockton and Carl Malone. Whenever you think of NBA duos, Stockton and Malone are one of, if not the first that comes to mind. And it's weird to put a duo that won no NBA championships higher than one that won six, but Stockton and Malone had such great chemistry for so long that they deserve the spot. They spent their entire careers together and without a doubt made each other better. Because separately, they were both great players, but they weren't the greatest college players and were picked 13th and 16th overall. So nobody knew just how good they'd become when they got paired up. They ran the greatest pick and roll game in pretty much the history of basketball, which is what helped Malone become the second all-time leading scorer and Stockton become the all-time leader in assists. They played together as teammates and at a high level longer than anyone on this list. Throughout the entire 90s, the Jazz almost always finished with at least 50 or 60 wins and both John Stockton and Carl Malone averaged insane numbers. Malone averaged 27 and 10 and won two MVPs, and Stockton averaged 15 points and 14 assists a game. As a duo, they were a perfect complement for each other, but like I said, the fact that they never won a championship does drop them down. Number 4. LeBron James and Dwayne Wade LeBron and Wade had some of the best chemistry we've ever seen between teammates. We all remember the passes that Wade would throw to LeBron without ever even looking back. Now most of the greatest duos in league history were between a big man and a perimeter player, but the fact that LeBron and Wade could coexist and become one of the first teams to succeed by playing small ball is what helped them become an all-time great duo. And the fact that they had the greatest small forward ever in LeBron and a top 3 shooting guard of all time in Dwayne Wade only helped their case. They made the NBA Finals every year they played together, went on a 27 game win streak at one point, and dominated the regular season and the playoffs. Number 3. Kobe and Shaq Once Kobe and Shaq teamed up, it took Kobe a few years to develop into a great player and for them to really come into their own. But once they did, starting in the 99 season, they became dominant. Because this was when Shaq really established himself as the most dominant center in league history. And when Kobe established himself as the top player in the league. He wasn't considered as the second greatest shooting guard of all time at this point, but he was working his way there. There wasn't a team in the league at this point, and not many other teams in history that could stop the one-two punch of Kobe and Shaq. Kobe could dominate the best perimeter defenders, and Shaq could dominate pretty much every other big man in the league. So even though they were dominant on the court, the fact that their run was cut short due to their competitive personalities, not being able to coexist slightly hurts their ranking. Number 2. Magic and Kareem Alright, let's be honest. Even if Kobe and Shaq could coexist, they'd still fall behind Magic and Kareem because they were a duo with the greatest point guard of all time and the greatest center of all time. They played together for 10 seasons, made the finals in 8 of them, and won an NBA championship in 5 of them. By beating teams like the Julius Irving led 76ers, the Larry Bird Kevin McHale Celtics, and the Bad Boys Pistons. There was already no center or team in the league that could stop Kareem and his skyhook, so when the Lakers combined that with Magic Johnson, they became unstoppable. Because they had Kareem to lead the team off the court and Magic to lead the team on the court. And what really helped this Lakers team was the fact that they really couldn't get double teamed. Because if they double teamed either Kareem or Magic, they were both smart enough players and had the skill to always be able to find the open man. And all of this is what helped them dominate the entire 80s. Number 1. Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen Nothing needs to be said here. 6 NBA championships, 6-0 in the finals. The greatest player ever with one of the greatest second option players ever. Jordan would have been Jordan either way, but there's no doubt that he wouldn't have had the same success without Pippen. They were the perfect combination because they could both score and defend, but Jordan would carry most of the load on offense 
and Pippen would guard the other team's best scorer. And they were so good as a duo without one of them being a big man that they were able to succeed in the era of big men. Now there's always some mixed opinions about these lists, so definitely comment and let me know with anything that you might agree or disagree with. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you next video.